Great to see um, everyone here, and uh, if I don't have any more wardrobe malfunctions, we'll uh, get, uh, get going. Uh, demonstrating that uh, I can't follow directions or stay on cue, uh, I'm going to uh, just take the opportunity just to uh, editorialize on a, on a couple of things that uh, Elaine and Borsica probably aren't comfortable saying because they're, uh, they're too bashful. Uh, but, uh, but this is really a, a great opportunity for you all, and I, I hope you'll, uh, I'm sure you'll become aware of that throughout the, um, th throughout the next couple days. But uh, I just have to say, uh, I really, my, my kudos, and I'm saying this because I'm a kind of Johnny-come-lately to this, a latecomer, but, but I've been so impressed. I've been involved in a, a large number of type trainings and things around the country, but this is really top-notch, uh, what they put together, and this little workbook that you have is a real gem. It's just uh, the constellation of what they've done uh, is probably the best succinct thing that I've seen. The best authoritative reference that we now have, and probably for the next few years, is the book that Borsica talked about that Ross is the senior editor on there. And as Borsica said, many of the folks you're hearing have uh, chapters in. But I, I strongly, I'll, I'll kind of double down on Borsica's recommendation. That, that really is the, the key reference uh, for the field to, uh, to uh, line, line up on. Um, also, I just wanted to say that, that some of the folks uh, here, that it, it's a phenomenal faculty and it's, uh, it's really exciting to me to be back here in Colorado with uh, some of the, the folks that are really at the, uh, you know, at the hub of, uh, of DNI science and not just uh, Borsica and myself, you'll be hearing from Ross, but also Dr. Goff you'll be hearing from. Both he and Ross have been chairs of the NIH study section. Uh, that, that looks at uh, DNI research, and then many, many other folks, including Spiro, Wilson, Arnie Beck, have been doing this uh, since before it was called, or before it had a name uh, to do this, it was called various other things. So, so I think you're really fortunate that way. And I think the last other uh, shout out I'd like to give is maybe, uh, Borsica, I think the one thing that you might have underemphasized a little bit in terms of use, although you were uh, technically correct in terms of what the NIH gets, is the use of the, uh, it's called the CFIR, CFIR, Consolidated Framework for Implementation Research, is, has been incredibly widely used, Laura Dam Schroeder and colleagues, and it's in your references, particularly in the VA. And again, we're also very, very lucky to have some of both the national and the local VA leaders here because Folks, they're the U.S. success story in terms of implementation science, in terms of partnering with operations, and in making a difference, and a, a huge difference in a delivery system over uh, 10, 10 or 15 years. So with that, I think that's, that's a, probably enough editorializing for me, but, but since we're on schedule here, uh, my task is to kind of give you a little background, but, but I wonder, Borsica and Elaine, if we're not too late, if people might not have something else, if we could just take a few more minutes, do you think? Or do you think I should get down to describing it? I think you are you were doing, before I started running off at the mouth, you were doing great anyway. So I just wonder, I mean, I can't imagine uh, both Elaine and Borska did a great job of succinctly covering, you know, probably a week's worth of material. So uh, if I was you, I think I might have some questions or things, and I just wonder if maybe we could just take the liberty for any of the three of us to uh, try and, and respond to any questions or issues or definitions or surprises you had. I mean, now might be particularly a surprise if you're not hearing something you thought you would get here or something doesn't quite make sense. Now, you know, now now's your time to uh, to speak up or others of you that are faculty or have been doing this stuff to add in either any clarification or I also don't want to, we, we kind of are trying to look for a balance, I think, here between focusing on what the science has learned, the common learnings and the principles is what we're trying to do, but also I don't think we want to, you know, pretend that there's more unanimity than there is, that, you know, both the academic and the U.S. culture, political culture, if uh, this isn't any big surprise to anybody, tends to focus on differences and disagreements, you know, and arguments more than it does commonalities. So I think we're trying to give you 
kind of the basics and kind of where the agreements are, but there are so are a lot of things that aren't worked out yet and, and are some disagreements, so uh, we want you to raise those and be comfortable doing that as well. So, um, that prompt any thoughts, comments, challenges? No? Anybody need more coffee? Yes, yes, please. trying to say the words right, DNI. Um, people ask me what I'm doing today. Um, so so I'm, I'm a clinician, mm -hmm. and um, my research ideas and things I would implement are, it seems to me, looking at the presentation so far, it seems to me it's um, my interest is too micro, and this seems very macro level. So um, can you speak to that? I'll take a quick shot, but then I'm going to defer to, to these these people or the leaders with the planning group you saw for the whole thing. My my understanding is we're starting macro to give you the context, the background, the big picture, and then progressively during the day we're going to jump down to get more concrete, more micro, and give you a chance to apply what uh, what, what you're learning and things. But trying to give you some common principles since there is this huge diversity in terms of background that people have. This morning. So, admittedly, this is probably, I think, and again, uh, I'll let Elaine and Borsica reply, but this is probably the most macro level thing, but we thought to kind of start us out on the same place. I think that what we should all remember that I mentioned the evidence based intervention being anything that is new idea. So, if your idea is a new approach to uh, have um, waiting times decreased in the clinic, that's not too micro for DNI research. It's basically it could apply to any new ideas that you have in your own clinic or your practice. It doesn't have to be a complex intervention. It might be a simple change. It can inform that kind of work as well. And please do challenge us throughout the day if you don't get to that micro level to, to get to that micro level. Ask those questions. That would be really helpful. I guess um, I kind of heard also part of your question around what's the, maybe it's the, is the micro macro the scale of intervention is that, and it's targeting as opposed to plus we have macro micro concepts so we're, we're kind of hitting me but it's the scale of the intervention right and what, yeah so what we're hoping just to kind of build on what Morshika is that these would be questions that you would ask whether you're at a micro level, who's the stakeholder, who's your audience, as well as if you were thinking a macro level, which might be an intervention that affects a whole city, state, et cetera. But it's the thought process, hopefully, that you walk away with that would allow you to systematically think through what you would be doing. But I, you know, I don't know if others want to. I, I was just going to comment from my perspective, since I deal with a lot of junior faculty and fellows, um, I'm wondering, I'm thinking, I'm guessing, actually, that many of you really have never considered or thought about the 61 theories <laughs> underlying DNI, and that this is so new that you sort of, you know, maybe you've heard of REAIM, but you probably haven't heard that much about any of the others. How many kind of feel that way? Yeah, yeah because I, it's, it's sort of overwhelming at first. I feel that way, too. I like to suck on to one or two that I kind of understand <laughs> and that work in my area, you know. And I think the reason to talk about this in the beginning is to just lay the framework that actually a lot of people have thought about this and you, you know, you, you would benefit. It's certainly you will need to probably if you're going to be submitting proposals in this area, you would benefit from looking through them and, and picking out one or two that work, and honestly, REAIM is the one that's used the most, so I think that's why they're focusing so much on it. The, the last thing I'd add, not to give you five different answers to your excellent question, uh, but that's what happens when you ask, you know, three different experts, you get five different answers. Um, I, I think uh, I might suggest for those of you that are clinicians or if this is new to you, you might actually think about this parallel the way you might think about a quality improvement or a, a QI type issue and that the risk of opening up a can of worms, that actually is one of the evolving issues in this field. There's, there's a lot of similar concepts, but how does this fit together with quality improvement? And there are, uh, are a lot of different, we're still working that out, but there are a number of similarities, and in particular, I think one issue 
that's a key issue for both fields, is this balance between fidelity, remember that Borsica talked about here in Reaim and almost all the other ones have a notion of fidelity of intervention to an evidence-based practice, principle, or policy uh, with appropriate adaptation to, to your local setting. And of course, the trick and the magic and the secret is in the word, the adjective appropriate. What's appropriate and what's not appropriate. And again, we could talk about that forever, but I think that might be a, a use in then uh, thinking about uh, both that and then the, the early questions that uh, Elaine framed, framed for you.